Lisa, I mean, there's such a, a, a big question right now about economic conditions, and I am curious about whether we're focusing a little bit too much or focusing a little bit too much on the wrong thing. Well, I, I mean, that's a loaded question a little bit. Uh, you know, clearly, I think that, that uh, the focus needs to remain uh, on the outlook for inflation and uh, obviously the outlook for uh, growth. Uh, the two of those combined have implications for the labor market and in turn are going to determine what the Fed uh, is going to do for the rest of this year. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we have to always compare uh, where we are with what expectations were. I think coming into the year, folks were preparing themselves uh, for a soft landing that included economic slowing. So, Right now, I think we've had more upside surprises uh, on growth than, than downside ones. And so on balance, while those retail sales are disappointing, uh, I think we're still in the plus column in terms of first quarter growth coming in better uh, than a lot of people uh, had uh, mm. forecast on Gen 1. We're certainly seeing that in the economic data. Our corporate fundamentals, at least based on what we've learned from this earnings season, is that supportive? Yeah, look, I, I think that it's been a little bit more uh, dispersion in, in the overall earnings season. We've had, you know, some good guidance and some good beats uh, among some companies, uh, but others we know are struggling to expand profit margins, which in many cases were baked into some of their original uh, guidance. And so uh, what's interesting is that uh, we still have negative earnings revision breadth meaning on balance, when we look at the number of companies revising up outlooks and those revising down outlooks, uh, we're still on the negative side of that. And part of that is has to do with the fact that expectations have, have been uh, pretty rosy uh, for 2024 and 2025, with the consensus looking for 11 to 12 percent year-on-year growth after a year uh, where maybe for the full year of 2023, we're going to eke out uh, you know, maybe only two or three percent growth. Lisa, I'm trying to understand what would ever disrupt the buy the dip narrative. Uh, I feel like I've been skeptical of this rally for what, Romaine? A month? Two yeah, weeks? maybe longer than that. Uh, maybe longer than that. Five weeks. And I continue to be proven wrong. Good thing I don't invest money. So to that point, like, what's it going to take for the market to wind up going down? Buy the dip, no matter what asset class you're in, still seems to be the narrative for the U.S., yeah, so I, I think as long as there's excess liquidity in the system, we're going to have uh, the ability uh, for uh, investors to come in and think that they're getting a bargain and, and participate, uh, to your point, in all asset classes uh, when, you know, there's some evidence of weakness. Um, you know, by and large, our forecast has been that liquidity is finally going to start tightening uh, in in the later part of this year, as we start, you know, to see Janet Yellen having to issue a little bit more treasuries as the bite of quantitative tightening, you know, continues, uh, and as some of the issues around commercial real estate mm -hmm. uh, and the regional banks, uh, you know, presses on on financial conditions. All right, let me flip it. What's it going to take for a small cap rally? And we are definitely seeing it today to be real and sustainable. <laughs> yeah. So, look, I think what what small caps are really going to require is a belief uh, that this is a soft landing that turns into a reacceleration of growth. Uh, and we know that small caps have been a little bit more sensitive uh, to interest rates, a little bit more sensitive to the fears uh, about the cost of financing. Uh, and so on days when people uh, are, you know, bidding down yields and, and saying, hey, maybe growth will be cooler and the Fed can cut sooner, uh, those are the days we're seeing some, some broadening and participation from more cyclical, more value and more small cap uh, oriented sectors. But for this to really get going, uh, we're going to have to uh, be convinced. I think investors are going to have to be convinced that this rebound in, in growth is, is multi-quarter and sustainable.